Thank you.
good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for finding the time to visit today's webinar. My name is Lexi, and I am a member of Ateneo Speed. And I am Steph, and I am a member of Ateneo Speed. Welcome to Connecting with Down Syndrome, another webinar series of Hands in Inclusion. To begin our webinar, let's begin with a prayer led by Mr. Carlos Miguel Kanahashi to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Anyway, Steph, I have a question. Do you know what hands and inclusion is? Okay, Lexi, I will explain it to you. So, hands and inclusion is a community of volunteers that promotes proper inclusion of people with disabilities in the Philippines. They share their stories to help PWDs become accepted in society as individuals and help them believe as equals, if not a functioning part of the community. Also, their main goal is to be able to reach out to proper channels of the government and private sectors to give aid and support to those who deserve this help. Wow, what a wonderful platform by Hands in Inclusion. It was founded last March 8, 2017 by Mr. Royland Gorospe Marlang, a Pasayeno, who is a self-advocate with autism. This initiative started as Inclusion in Action, his agenda was to unite and educate both citizens and netizens about PWD inclusion via the core values of Hanson inclusion. Awesome! But any idea what is connecting to Down syndrome, Lexi? <laughs> Good question, Steph. It is the second webinar series of Hanson inclusion and one of the major steps to fulfill their vision. As one of the major campaigns for inclusion of persons with disabilities, the speakers will discuss their stories of success and reason for PWD inclusion, as well as other related information. For this webinar, we will discuss what Down syndrome is all about and the testimonial of a mother who has a child with Down syndrome, 
Also, in celebration of Down Syndrome Awareness Month in the Philippines, we will listen and interact with what Down Syndrome is all about. To give the opening remarks, may we call on the Documentations Committee Chairman of Hands in Inclusion, Mr. Christian Gerald Chan. In this world, there are people who are not born perfect. Most in this world, there are people who don't look like us. And in this world, there are people who are born with different conditions. One of them being trisomy 22. Trisomy 22 is a biological condition where, as a FYI, the 22nd chromosome has three copies instead of the usual two. It is more often known as Down syndrome. And this webinar, called Connected with Down Syndrome, hopes that it would enlighten us about this condition and what can we do with people who have this condition and interact with them in a respectful way. Here from our three speakers, Dr. Francis Saber de Malanta, as he shares his experience with this condition and has how he enli enlightens us with what this condition is. Also here from Ms. Susanna Yuzon, who is a president and founder of Ms. Possibilities, who and let her, let her share with us how her organization deals with these people, how her organization enlightens and enriches these people with Down syndrome. And finally, let us hear from Ms. Mona Bisperas, a mom who shares his, her testimony with her son, who has Down syndrome. I hope all of us can be enlightened with these speakers, their words. And I hope all of us can have a little takeaway from them. Because people with Down syndrome are just like us. People who are different, but at the same time, the same. I hope you enjoy these people, their speeches, their thoughts, and this whole webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sue Christian, for your opening remarks. To formally begin our webinar, let us introduce our first speaker, Dr. Francis Xavier de Melanta. 
He's a pediatric medical practitioner in St. Luke's Medical Center, Bonag Fascia Global City, and Quezon City's branch section of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics Head. He too is a member of the research committee in St. Luke's Medical Center, Quezon City branch. He is the founder and the medical director of Child's Developmental Rehabilitative Early Assessment and Management Foundation Inc. And medical director of ABS-CBN Lincoln Capamilia Children's Village. He will discuss the development of Down syndrome. Please let us give a virtual warm applause to Dr. Francis Xavier de Malanta. Hello, everyone. Can you see me? Am I coming out clear? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for this invitation to be able to speak to all of you and to able to be able to share with you uh, how to understand Down syndrome. And I like what our speaker before me said, we are uh, different but the same. And I think it is on that note that I'd like to tell you a little about Down syndrome. Can we have my slides, please? So let's all remember uh, the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines uh, who has spearheaded a parent support group calling together all the families with Down Syndrome, children, adults, uh, to come together and celebrate their uniqueness. February is actually a Down Syndrome Awareness, Consciousness Month. And on March 21, and you know why they, they called it World Down Syndrome Day. It's uh, 321. So March 21, because it's uh, trisomy, that's 321, is on chromosome 21, where the defect may, lay, uh, may have happened. So that's for all of us to remember it easily. Yes, we're waiting for my lecture to load. In fact, uh, here's one thing that I want to share with you. Uh, I don't know until now how to do this, so I, I have asked Roylan, okay, to to load it for me, and see how uh, you may have a disability, but yet you are able to help someone uh, as old as I am, <laughs> a professional but there are different strengths that we have as uh, people, as individual persons, and that we need each other in our lives to be able to function effectively. So here goes. What is... Down syndrome, the most common genetic cause of what we call now as intellectual disability, as we are trying to veer away from the word mental retardation. Next slide, please. So what are some facts about it? Boys and girls are equally affected. It, is, uh, it happens in about one out of 600 or 800 births. And he, this is why it's called trisomy 21. There's an extra from the 46 chromosomes that we have uh, becomes 47. And saying that it's a genetic accident means there was nothing the mother or father did to have a child with Down syndrome. Most common type is the non-disjunction, which accounts for about 95%. Mosaic system is about 1% to 2%, and the translocation type, which is 3 to 4%. What are some clinical signs associated with Down syndrome? You have hypotonia, that's low muscle tone, like a rag doll, poor moral reflex, hyperflexibility of the joints where you can move this, a flat facial profile. Probably this is seen initially, but 
not quite when they're a little bit older where they're always full of smiles and laughter. Your slanted palpebral fissures, uh, your auricles, low set ears, a simian crease, but having a simian crease doesn't make you have Down syndrome right away, okay? We, we know of some uh, typical children, adults who have that simian crease and the excess skin at the back of the neck. Next slide, please. So what are some medical conditions that may be uh, that may be concurrently seen in children with Down syndrome? First on the list are congenital heart disease issues. And second would be thyroid problems. So we would always check out all these other medical conditions to be addressed before we even do any of our therapy. Next to thyroid problems would be vision problems, hearing concerns, vision problems. Then we have your atlantoaxial instability with the neck. Some will have seizure disorders and most common in about uh, a great percentage will have some developmental or growth delay. So we have a separate, as a, next slide please. I know that it'll come up later. We use a different form for children with Down syndrome. So here is a healthcare guideline which will be made available for you, what we should be doing at different ages. Next slide, please. And as we continue to uh, check how they are as they grow older, we look for all the other medical issues and try to address them. Next slide. So great, this, that there is great diversity in the behavior, intellect, and physical development of children with Down syndrome. Your language and motor skills are slowest to develop. Self-help and eye-hand coordination is fastest to progress. And our intellectual disability may range from mild, moderate, profound, severe to profound kind of intellectual disability. So if we were to discuss the different domains of development that are affected, that would include gross motor, fine motor, language, which is separated into expressive and receptive language, personal social skills, and cognitive skills. So the normal gross motor development of a child with or without Down syndrome is from head to foot which is what we call cephalocaudal pattern, where a child is supposed to be able to raise his head, turn to the side, roll over, crawl, before they can do their uh, sitting, stepping, walking, jumping, running. So it, it happens that the muscles from the top of the head all the way down is how they start to develop. And here are some motor milestones that we, that we look out for. Like I said, in children with Down syndrome, they're a bit later compared to those without Down syndrome. A few one or two months difference. That's why we don't give out a checklist. It is so, not to make a parent so overly uh, concerned because th there is a range of this development that it can happen. And... When we talk about motor milestones, that's during the first year of life. And the second year of life, we talk about language milestones. So it's very important to have the child uh, be able to sit, uh, again, stand, walk, run before they can talk. Next slide, please. Okay, most studied and best predictor of la later motor skill attainment and often affected by the presence of serious congenital heart disease. And this may be due to the dysgenesis of the cerebral cortex and cerebellum, as well as delays in myelination, which explains for hypotonia in Down syndrome. When there is no intervention, compensatory movement patterns will develop, like standing and walking with hips in external rotation. Your knees will be stiff, your feet flat turned outwards. They can sit with their trunk rounded and pelvis tilted back or standing with a lordosis where there's a curvature at the back. In terms of language skills, okay, spoken language emerges between two and a half to four years old versus a typical child where we want to find out or check that they have 50 words at the very least when they reach two years old. There is no vocabulary spurt. By three years old, there might be about 18 words. And comprehension may be better 
than them being able to talk. So the receptive language, and they have variable speech intelligibility, meaning some of them might talk uh, garbled or ba 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 ma 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 or they they have bulol, right? with 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 the, with the words that they use. But with proper intervention, we can get them uh, to talk better. Why is it that their speech are poorly understood? First, you have a small oral cavity. They have an enlarged tongue. They also have an elevated larynx. And sometimes if they keep drooling, it means they have hypotonia of your, their speech muscles and also the underdevelopment of the paranasal sinuses. So frequent use of routines or stereotype expressions of speech. There's difficulty processing sequential information. About 60 to 80% have hearing deficits. That's why it's very important for them to undergo a hearing test. And we do that routinely upon birth. Now, if they scored past during that uh, autoacoustic emission test done as a newborn, but have speech delay, we have to repeat probably a brainstem auditory evoke response test to make sure that there are no high or low frequency sounds that they're not hearing. Also, about 20 to 50% of children will have a recurring otitis media or inner ear infection. So they have a faster reaction time to visual rather than auditory signals. Um, the use of gestural learning as a way to bridge transition to speech amplification like hearing aids may be used and early referral to speech and language pathologies plus parent training will ensure that the child with down syndrome will develop the communication language skills better so the key problem for children with down syndrome is learning it the dif difference delay debate so factors which determine the developmental progress is what could be the learning style of a Down syndrome child? Next slide. Uh, again, what this means is that the sequence of development is preserved, but the progress is slow. And the difference in development is shown better performance of social adaptation. There is progressive deceleration of intellectual growth over time. So they may start to be uh, developing at par, but somehow along the way, they might uh, have a little delays in their intellectual abilities. So consolidation will take longer in children with Down syndrome, slow growth and maturation of memory as well is limited attention span, which may present as barriers. They are more receptive to visual than auditory signals, so it's better that they see. Look at all these patterns here, uh, the shapes of and the colors of this form board. So they better function in daily situations than test situations. Again, I say let's celebrate what they can do rather than just focusing on what they cannot uh, do. Okay, next slide, please. So early intervention is key. Time and time again, we repeatedly say uh, the earlier we start intervention, barring all medical complications, we can start as early as their first month upon their discharge from the hospital. These organized services will attempt to maximize the developmental potential of Down syndrome, children with Down syndrome. Second month of life, we can evaluate the family and child. And during the first year, we have to set our therapeutic goals. So, as I mentioned earlier, we have to begin early stimulation, establish their feeding routines, recognize and evaluate parental expectations. So, what are some pitfalls in management? Failing to inform and educate the parents in a sensitive manner. I have stopped telling a parent that I'm sorry you have a child with Down syndrome. Uh, rather, I would say congratulations, we have a child with Down syndrome, yet able to do many things if we will allow this to happen. So first year of life, some of them may not detect or monitor critical medical problems like congenital heart disease, gastrointestinal problems, or ear infections. 
And as they get older, there may be some failure in identifying medical problems that impair the acquisition of developmental skills. Like for example, a thyroid problem, an ear infection, or even your impaired visual acuity. Between adolescence to adulthood, there are medical problems like Alzheimer's and maybe a heart condition like mitral valve prolapse, which may be unfamiliar to pediatricians. Uh, the challenge here is that when a child with Down syndrome gets older, they tend to stay with us, their pediatricians, until they're old already. But there could be transition of care as well. Also, there can maybe a lack of community resources for vocational training, social skills development, recreational, and job opportunities. So the challenge, next slide, remains for us to be inclusive, for us to be able to do all these things for children with or without special needs. So what would be some determinants for a favorable outcome? Early diagnosis and management of medical conditions. Key is the parental involvement. For me, I keep telling parents, acceptance is the key. Once that you've accepted the condition, then we can move forward. So we have to have positive child factors, family, siblings, and all our support groups, plus env environmental factors, which will assure this favorable outcome. What do new parents need to know about development in Down children with Down syndrome? The child with Down syndrome is a child first. Let's remember that. They have abilities. Let's turn away from disabilities, but celebrate their abilities. Children with Down syndrome will make developmental progress and learning is a lifetime experience for those with Down syndrome and for all of us. So uh, in ending, I'd like you to, again, uh, be able to connect with the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines. If my memory serves me right, we're celebrating our 25th year or even more. And uh, there has been a, a Down syndrome walk virtually that just happened. And let's continue uh, to be able to accept all children with special needs and have respect for them and include them in everything that we do. This last photo, let me show it. Okay, uh, this was, uh, these are pictures of 21 of the children with Down syndrome I've been taking care of. This must have been about uh, six years ago when we had a photo exhibit for each one of them. Uh, we, I remember them and I still look out for many of them even as they grow older and look at all their smiles. A whole new world of perfect. So let's celebrate all children with Down syndrome, without Down syndrome, those with abilities and special abilities, because we would like them to be part of our world. And that is one world that is inclusive and respectful of each child. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Meron tayong rest period. Baka dapat may music na pineplay, di ba? Siguro tayo muna mag-usap. Terp, what do you think? So again, all these efforts that we're doing is being mindful that even if we're different, we are alike. Okay, I, I hung on to that word uh, in our opening remarks, right? Um, at the end of the day, let us always remember to be kind. Uh, do you know that they say that Bhutan is the happiest country in the world? And you know why they are the happiest country? It's because they think of death five times a day. And it's not supposed to be morbid, but rather... To let everyone think, if this were my last day to... Hmm.
Okay, so we're experiencing some technical difficulties, but thank you so much, Dr. Dimalanta, for sharing what Down syndrome is all about. And yes, acceptance is the key talaga. So of course, the short lecture about the Down syndrome helped our viewers to know different medical conditions as well as the developmental expectations and then learning styles. And it is important for us to know these kinds of information so that we can understand children with Down syndrome better. You know, Steph, you're right. The talk was absolutely informative and I loved how he really reminded us that we're all the same despite possible disabilities. And besides that, I also learned today that there was a deeper symbolism as to why March 21 is World Down Syndrome Day. Like, if we go back, Dr. De Malanta said it signifies the replication of the 21st chromosome that causes Down syndrome. Yes, it's pretty cool and amazing. All pretty right, cool. so let us introduce our next speaker. She's the founder and current president of Miss Possibilities Foundation, a two-time winner of the Mrs. Thailand pageant and the pageant winner of Mrs. World in 2003. She will discuss celebrating the extra chromosome. Please let us give virtual round of applause to Mrs. Susanna Pavadi Bencherut Yuzon. Hi, hi everyone. Hello. So thank you for doing this. It's a very important for the National Down Syndrome Awareness Month that we have in February here in the Philippines. So uh, we appreciate the more the more awareness that you're creating. And also to have the viewpoint of not only the professionals as Dr. DeMolanta, but also parents um, on the how we deal with it every single day. Hello. Can you hear? Hello. Yes. So um the presentation that i have is are you going to be able to show it i sent earlier is my presentation sent from from your side Paul? my powerpoint Hello? Hey Steph, so I've honestly, I'm learning so much from this like webinar. What about you? What interesting takeaways did you get besides the ones that we heard a while ago? Well, of course, since we have the first speaker, Palang, I'm really excited to um, hear the other speakers to talk about the Down syndrome and what um, maybe the impacts are like, you know, what can what can they share for us to know better and understand the children's better yeah i definitely agree, definitely agree with you and i think that it's really important for us to take time to really get to know and really find ways to understand everyone and not just because they're said to be limited yes that's true so So I can continue with the presentation. Um, so I would like to speak today about celebrating the extra chromosome. So as we uh, heard from Dr. DeMolanta, the definition of trisomy 21 or Down syndrome is having the extra chromosome on the 21st pair of our chromosomes. So they do, <coughs> excuse me. So this is Joey's actual 
uh, karyotype. So when there's uh, when there's markers or when they see that there might be other markers, as in soft markers, as they say, as uh, when the child is born or during an ultrasound, um, a karyotype can be done like this. And then that will be the definite uh, last, uh, that's the definite positive of having, of having Down syndrome. The next slide, please. So what I mean about celebrate is something that we haven't been actually doing in a lot of the Asian countries here. I'm actually from Thailand and um, I see the, the similarities of a lot of um, Asian countries or even other countries that might have um, traditional ways of thinking about Down syndrome is that we love our children, but you know, if, if the society puts uh, importance on success as uh, the definition of success as becoming uh, maybe a doctor, a politician, a lawyer, or doing well in school. Uh, we have to redefine our definition of what success is and how do we celebrate each person and their individual contributions that they can make for society. Uh, I think when Johanna, my daughter, was first born, uh, we received a lot of that information um, especially right away, like maybe from the doctors that said, you know, they apologize that your child has Down syndrome instead of saying congratulations, uh, because every child has something to offer of society and every person does. So we, I think we have the, you know, different of, we'd look at our, how do we define um, what success is or what a productive person in society is. Uh, for, for me, I use the acronym CELEBRATE and we'll go through each one quickly. So next slide, please. The first one would be to find comfort. Uh, for the new parents, um, comfort is what you will find in uh, your support group around you. So if in the Philippines, um, you have the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines, or which is known as DESAPI. Uh, this is a foundation founded over 29 years ago, and uh, it's just from parents. So we have you know, in the Philippines, unfortunately, we have very, very, very limited government support um, for families or for people, individuals with Down syndrome. So this is um, one of the biggest help because we do have early intervention uh, every quarter. Uh, so we do uh, co-parents, like we pay it forward. So the parents um, would join and um, there may be parents of adult children or of teenager children that's been through the same journey to help the new parents and also to guide them what should they do next, what, what therapies, and also the emotional support. So we have supportive family members. And, um, you know, you cannot guarantee how each family member, or you cannot predict or even, um, you know, just command what each, how each family member will react to having Down syndrome, to having a child with Down syndrome. And at the beginning, my husband and I really felt alone, not because our families weren't supportive, but of course it's different when you're actually the parent of someone with Down syndrome. So we really felt that, you know, even our families didn't understand, but they will show their support in their own way. And um, um, this is Johanna with her great grandparents. And as you can imagine, um, they do have Chinese blood in their family, so they're Filipino Chinese. But as you can imagine that you know, having the first member in our family with someone with Down syndrome, everyone has their own misconceptions or how to re respond to it. Or so, you know, we just have to always be understanding of our of our relatives, not to take things too personally, also, um, and know that it's coming from a place of maybe not knowing, not knowing better, and also a place of love. And of course, if we have any relatives or any friends that really intentionally cannot accept or do not love our children or cannot accept our children, then we would just really have to think about who do we want to surround her with because our child is the most important that she grows up with confidence. Um, I also, you know, looked on the books. One of the books is Bloom that's written by a mom. It's a New York bestseller. So during that time, um, I think her daughter was only like two or three years older than Joey. So that was one of the books that I read was her memoirs. Uh, we can speak to other co-parents. Um, the picture that you see there is our DISAPI early intervention group since November 11th, 2012. So Joey was just three weeks old when we went to our first early intervention and we met 
uh, the other parents where their kids are all about the same age. So we were crying together. We were, you know, speaking about this. And um, in the end, we, we've been friends through this whole time. Our group has stayed together. We've had play dates. We've been to our first birthdays parties. We've done our seventh birthday parties. We've done um, away trips. That's our, our trip in Iloilo. So trips like that. And so that's what we have done. So just look for the resources around you and try to get as much information as you can. You know, one thing that I wouldn't do is like try to Google the definition of Down syndrome and the medical issues because uh, for that, it's it's just that you know, they, they would list so many things that are so, their list is so long for the medical issues that can apply to someone with Down syndrome. But it doesn't mean that your child will have all of those or most of those. So for me, most important is, you know, to have your professionals, your therapists, your doctors also be there to help you along the way. And they can answer questions about your child specifically, because um, not all children will be the same, just like not all of us will be the same ever. So we need to get professional advice on a personal level and not Google it. As I know that many of us have tried, even with our own lives, if we have a headache, it could be anything from just not sleeping enough, stress, or it could be all the way to like they will say cancer or a tumor. So it's better not to Google it and, you know, to put additional stress into your life, especially when you're not so familiar with Down syndrome. Um, next slide, please. So for celebrate, the next letter is E. E is for early intervention, um, zero to seven years old. Normally they will say before it was zero to three. But zero to seven is also important um, because they're still for that's like when it counts to school age. Actually, this picture was taken in Dr. De Milanta's office um, and, and, he, and Dr. De Milanta also tries to create a lot of awareness at this at St. Luke's Hospital. So that was during a photo opportunity, a photo ex exhibition uh, for Down syndrome in St. Luke's. So. As you see here, it was also used for DASAPI. The, the right is the logo for DASAPI and for our early intervention. Um, so, you know, we, for early intervention, we really, no, number one is to be the medical. If your child is born with um, congenital heart defects, um, which my, my daughter also had, we have to address those issues. We have to address the issues of thyroids. We have to address the issue of um, any gastro issues, anything that your child, you know, we have to make sure that they're, they're really well. And it's not enough just to pass the neonatal test or the, you know, at, in the hospital. We had to check her hearing and a lot of things came out. Uh, she passed like her thyroid, but upon further deeper checking, we can see that she has elevated levels of some. So she's been on maintenance medicine this whole time. And her, her heart was not caught at birth. It was not caught until... 10 days after that we had suspicions of the Down syndrome and we took her to the pedia, the cardiopedia. And that's when we found out that they had, um, she had three holes open and also a PDA open in her heart. So I was even wondering like, why did the initial pedia or other PDS that we'd taken her didn't catch it? Uh, it's really, you need specialists for that. So at the first year is the hardest for the medical issues. And while we're doing that, we also have to start addressing the therapies. Since it's, ex it's expected, uh, not all, but it's expected that people with Down syndrome will have trouble, will have more delays uh, physically because sometimes of the, uh, they have hypotonia, which means their muscles are looser, their joints are looser. So the, the milestones of sitting up, walking, eating, all this will be delayed. So what we try to do is instead of just seeing where the delays are and trying to fix it later, or like, oh, your child is delays behind other children now. We tried to have early intervention, which means that will help uh, create, keep them up to, try to keep them up to uh, close to the milestone age as close as possible. The reason for this is that most of our children will always walk, but let's say your child is delayed in walking. Um, if your child is very delayed in walking, it, it's not only the walking, it's also, or in crawling, it's also that time that they're, they're using their brain to explore things. They're using your brain to walk around to explore or to crawl around and explore and the textile of, uh, the tactile of touching things and learning new things. So that's why it's important to have, let them have that experience of crawling, of walking, 
of speaking, of eating, of everything they have at the same, you know, at as much as possible. So we've been doing early intervention with Joey PT since she was one month old and um, per, that's physical therapy. And then after one year old, she started with occupational therapy and which is fine motor skills and also speech therapy. The next slide, please. The so next slide, please. While we're waiting for the next slide, I can also elaborate more on how we use our family members. Um, you know, the siblings are great help. The siblings, like this is JC, this is Joey's younger, younger sister, but she also helps a lot with Joey, um, teaching Joey and helping Joey. She, they're 23 months apart, and so they get to play together and just having them play together it's like having a therapist at home. And so she helps her sister now uh, with other things and she teaches her a lot too. So uh, love, L in celebrate is love your child. So love is also, um, you know, of course we love our children, but to physically, um, to proactively love our children, for me, I would always say that you have to discipline them and you have to expect the the most from them. So we support them. I advocate for her. We support her. But we cannot feel sorry for our children. I know our children will go through a lot. Some have surgeries. Um, but we cannot feel like Kawawa. They're, you know, we don't expect much from them. Or Kawawa, they can't listen to our, our instructions or they're not following the rules because, you know, they have Down syndrome. We can't do that. That's doing them a huge disservice. What we need from our children is that we would like for them to be as independent as possible, a productive member of society. And so like any child to do that, you would have to go, you would have to teach them discipline. You have to teach them what is appropriate and what is allowed in our society. So if you think that, you know, it's okay for your child to run around or to grab food off someone's plate and you say, oh, it's okay, they have Down syndrome. It's not an excuse because that's not gonna be acceptable when they grow up, when they go to school, when they go to work, when they go to someone else's house. So discipline is very important. Um, we discipline the same way that we discipline her younger sister. And uh, you know they, they know that disrespect and disobedience are not allowed in the house. Uh, our discipline, the way every, every house is different, uh, but for us, uh, we have consequences, which means they will stand in the corner facing the wall for the number of minutes according to their age. So if they're three years old, it's three minutes. If they're seven years old, it's seven minutes. And then we will discuss it. Now, if the, the, dis if the, um, if the disobedience is more, as in they don't want to go to the corner or they're not listening, um, then we will have a spanking, one spanking on the on the beat on her butt so um they know that what's expected of them and joey is no different than her sister she's expected to know and she's also disciplined as well so this is really important how you love you can't just say that you love your child and you want to give them everything and you want to cuddle them and you want to say that their life is hardy hard enough so you want to spoil them just remember that that's you know in the long term always treat your child how you want them to be 30 years from now. So if you want them to still, um, you know, still be rowdy or still having tantrums, um, you know, when they're 10 years old or when they're 20 or 30, then, you know, that's, you have to start training as soon as possible. Um, I don't think my daughter like ever, I think she had maybe one ha half a tantrum. I don't think she ever had a tantrum. Uh, so so it's she really knows that you know she knows what's what should be done in the house and actually johanna now that she's eight years old um she loves like a lot of kids with down syndrome she knows her routine so once she knows her routine she knows her boundaries of what's acceptable what's not she's actually a great listener and actually she does everything her routines more than her her little sister so that's something that um for, for us personally, that we just treat her like an, any member of the family, including with responsibilities, her chores, and also her discipline. Okay, next slide, please. E in celebrate is for accept, expect the best from all. So that's also partly what I was saying is, as when we love, we expect the best from her. 
So we expect the best from our child uh, to, to reach her fullest potential. So I'm not, we're not trying to put pressure on her, uh, not too much pressure, but we put enough pressure on her just like any other child that they can, we, if we know that they can do something, we don't let them say that they can't. And so she tries very hard at school. She's in um, an inclusive school. She's the only one in her school with Down syndrome and the first one, um, but she tries to keep up with her class. And as long as she's still enjoying it and having fun, and she really, really loves and she takes pride in trying so hard and studying. So we, we think that that's a good thing as long as it's not causing her stress or something that she uh, something that she really, really dislikes. Um, but mostly, as I said, that she's good with routine. She also has a lot of our children might have issues with transitioning, which means going from one activity to another or going to one environment to another. So we also had this and, you know, but once she gets to the new activity, the new environment, she really enjoys it. So we know that we have to kind of guide her or try to like give her enough pressure to try it first. And then afterwards, she's happy she does. We also expect, <clears throat> excuse me, we also expect the best from our support team. So our teachers, our doctors, our therapists, um, I, you know, I think we've gone through many therapists with Joey. I mean, we she stayed with their, excuse me, <clears throat> she's had therapists that's been with us since she was, you know, the since she was one year old, since she was uh, one month old. Um, but when we try to get new, uh, it, try to get new teachers or, or therapists also, I also see if, if they have a good match with her, if their heart is in the right place. So there's been some that have been with us for six or seven years. And then there's other ones that, <clears throat> excuse me, that maybe I've only seen once or twice or a month or two months in a row. And then I feel like if it's not a good fit, then we move on. Cause I expect them to um, be as, not as, as invested as we are, but at least have some investment in the child. So not spending the hour, just writing her as like another student. Um, so that's, we always expect that from the teachers and, in court, and our doctors as well. Excuse me, I'll just take a small drink. Thank you. So also the doctors, we also expect the doctors, you know, to see, see her as a child, see her as Johanna too, but also to know that Down syndrome does play a role in her health, but not just to see everything as, as having, as a reason for Down syndrome. So what da what's dangerous is that, is that sometimes people might, kid, children might have con um, issues with constipation or they might have issues with other medical issues and doctors will just write it off as <clears throat> maybe that's just the down syndrome but it's not just like any other child we have to figure out why why the why do they have that uh, so as you saw in the picture before joey was also like she models for sm kids she's on the she she was on you know in the catalogs she was in on the posters um she also is in school um she does you know, she's, she likes doing fashion walks. Um, so that's really, and she, she enjoys what she does now. Um, B is for to believe. Um, so that's Johanna also when we start have a happy walk. So that's when she was a baby, she was on the SM globe. Um, we really advocate for her. So we really celebrate her. So that's what I mean by celebrate. Um, we really want her to know when she goes older and looks back to pictures that um, having Down syndrome is something that, you know, we, we love about her. We wouldn't want to change anything other than maybe some of the medical issues. But the actual extra chromosome that makes her personality or makes her the way she is, we, we, act, we love it. And we feel blessed for her for that. Um, in her school, she was voted Miss Bright Sparks, too. We, you know, and um, we appreciate the support and the belief that we have from her teachers and her schools. Um, you know, that they will work with her. They, uh, they have the accommodations, the modifications. So that's something that we really appreciate. Um, people that believe in her. So we know that we always tell her that we believe in her too. Next slide, please. R is for raise the child like all others. So like what I was saying before, um, you know, she's in our family. She's just another, another child. Uh, and she's she has all the same disciplines. She has all the same. She gets in trouble, right, Joe and JC? Mm -hmm. 
just like you do, she gets in trouble. Do we treat Joey different in any way, you think? Oh, no. No? She still has to do her homework. She actually studies harder than you. She works harder than you sometimes mm-hmm. in studying because she needs to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, JC's a great sister. She's supportive. And we used to, before the pandemic, before when we used to go to the therapies, since JC was born, she would always go with us to all the different therapy sessions, too. Um, and, and that's her classroom, her school. So as you can see that, you know, she is in her school, she's in the age appropriate class and we try hard to educate everyone. So she at her school, including the children, including her classmates, so they can treat her just like another friend, like all others. Uh, Next slide, please. So in celebrate, A is for to advocate. So we have to be advocacy. We have to have an advocacy. We have to advocate for our child. Um, this means uh, we have to challenge injustices and discrimination. Um, unfortunately, that's probably one of the saddest part of having a child with Down syndrome is that you know that they will be met with discrimination, even if it's openly or even if it's just in people's thoughts. Um, and also the injustices that you might have, like how to, like, Right now, I mean, it's it's more difficult for them to have an inclusion, inclusive education. Um, lots of children are not prioritized. Like if they need heart heart surgery, are not prioritized if they have Down syndrome. Uh, you know, there's discrimination around the world. Uh, what is sad is that countries that we consider uh, very advanced countries, as Finland, um, the and other Scandinavian countries, you know, they're um, termination rate for when they discover a pregnant woman with Down syndrome would be 99 to 100%. So in countries like Finland, pretty soon, I think people with Down syndrome will be extinct. They won't have anyone anymore with Down syndrome. Um, in in, Thai, in, um, in America, I believe it's up to 7, 67 or 70% that are terminated. So that those injustices and discrimination happens, right? when I say like some doctors, you know, the OBGYN will say that, I'm sorry that your child has Down syndrome. That's a, that's a discrimination right there. So, Cause it just conveys that somehow our children is less or our, our children are a disappointment. So that's already, um, you know, we have to, what we're trying to do is educate and to let doctors know, to let everyone know that our children are amazing and we can, they can learn, we can learn so much from them. I mean, Johanna has been our greatest teacher she's uh, my greatest teacher even you know later in life she's taught me so much and for all her friends and for her sister she's taught her them compassion she's taught them um to, you know to be patient she's taught them how to really love because she loves unconditionally and she's just an amazing friend and sister too so be an advocate for not only your child but for others like him um or her as well so that's why we also have the Miss possibilities we have the down syndrome association of the philippines so we can also help other other children you know sometimes they, they might not have a voice or the parents might not have as voice but we have to work together as a community to stick together and it doesn't have to be that your family has to have someone with down syndrome to advocate for others you know there are many people advocating even when they don't have a child with down syndrome themselves um, we're we're fortunate that even celebrities are, are being advocates for this and creating awareness. Uh, so start small and then you can make a big difference. So you might think that, oh, I don't have the resources, I don't have the money, I don't have the time to like create a foundation or to, or to really like speak about this or who's going to listen to me, I can't change the law. You know, just start in your, start small, start from parent to parent. And um, that's how we we grew. That's how we grew with the Miss Possibilities. It's just co-parents coming together and with an idea and trying to make the Miss Possibilities um, a reality. So you know, come together and just uh, leave leave the the big picture because God already knows what you ha- He has planned for you. God already knows why He blessed you with a child with Down syndrome. But, you know, but just take your small steps and take action first um, and you know don't be afraid to try even even advocating it means it's, it sounds like a big word but even in just teaching 
you know, um, teaching your your family to do better, teaching your family to not use um, words as the R word or not use the word, uh, sorry, like mongoloid, you know, teaching people that you know and correcting them, uh, even though you know it's not ill intended. But if you correct them nicely or you tell them, that's already advocating for your child because you're creating a world that you want them to grow in. So that's for A. Next slide, please. Uh, for T is to teach life skills. So um, like I said, one of our goals is for her to be independent as possible. Uh, we want her to be a part of society. We don't want her to be a burden on society, but we want her to be productive and give back to society in her way. Uh, and we also want to have, like I said, appropriate public behavior, um, but not only that. So for, for me, independence is to be able to have self-care, which means um, toileting, uh, you know, everything that she can do as she grows up and becomes, has puberty is taking care of her own menstrual um, time, you know, during her times, taking, understanding that. Um, also, we know that it takes more work. It doesn't come naturally or come easily as a typical child, but we know that she's capable of that too. Uh, what she does here is like, if you see the picture is that she's responsible. Once she feels responsible, she have she has confidence to not only help herself, but to help others. So she walks our dog. She knows that she's responsible for that. When we do, um, during this pandemic, we do donations for frontliners. She packs the bags, she helps out. Um, when the donation trucks come with other, do like the used donation, she knows how to load up the trucks. Um, so she feels that she's a part of society. And that's what you have to do also in your home and also at school is not also not always let them be the helpy, not always let them like other kids helping them or the other other siblings helping them. Let them know that they can help also. So you know that you get if you let them know that. Uh, let's say that their chore is all they're the ones that set the tables or they're the ones that just even to put the toothpaste on everyone's toothbrush in the morning give them a responsibility and know that they that they have something to give back to your your family and also your society uh, so for me life skills is not just about um, being able to cook or bake but it's also just how to know and how to how to know what to do in certain situations that they're responsible to feel that they are confident to try to help to, and try to do new things and also how to regulate their emotions that's a that's a huge life skill so if they become frustrated or they become um, upset how do they regulate their emotions are they going to throw things are they going to cry out or are they going to do something appropriate or how do they process their emotions so that's what we're working with her also how to how to process her emotions. There's a time that um, she was afraid to cry, I think, because <laughs> like, uh, and I think, I think she's heard before, like, or even watching before when she was younger about movies and they were saying like, brave people, or you be brave, be brave, don't cry. So even when she fell down, she was afraid to cry. And so we have to read, treat, read, like to teach her and she would hide her, like if she fell down and she got an injury, she would hide it because she didn't want to, to be open about it. But we would have to, tell her that it's okay to cry, process it with her. Um, so, you know, sometimes she didn't want to see her sister cry. If her sister got hurt, she didn't know how to react. Um, so she would just throw throw something at her sister. She didn't know how to react. So we had to process with it and teach her to say, to, to teach her to say like, are you okay? Or to give her a, and to go in and give them a hug. If it's your sister, how do you make them feel better? So those are the life skills that we work on. and each child's progress will be at a different speed and um, each I think for each family your your definition of what life skills are will be you know will be a little different in each family what's important to your family uh, so that's for us and also our life skills for us is for her to pray so she's learned to pray she learns to sing um, sing to God and to praise God so that's one of our life skills that we teach her also Next slide, please. E, I think this is the last one, is to educate others. Uh, so uh, as I said, if you see in the picture here, this is every year since she's been in kindergarten, I would go into her classroom since she's the only one in the first one with Down syndrome. 
I would go in and read a book, a children's book about Down syndrome. We might do some activities um, to help them further understand Down syndrome, such as one game, like we would try to let them have as many marshmallows in their mouth as possible and try to say their name. Uh, because that's how, so they understand sometimes why Joey doesn't speak so clearly. Or we would let them, you know, put two or three socks on one hand and let them write, try to write their name. And so they can understand why it's harder for Joey to write. Uh, so just so, so they can understand things. And we do that every year. Uh, we also meet with the teachers every year. And um, we, we speak about how Joey learns, um, more about Joey, about how she learns, how she's like most people with Down syndrome, a visual learner. So we need to have her, you know, sit in the very front and she needs to pay attention that way. Um, it will help her pay attention to class. And if she has attention, um, you know, problems with her attention, how, if she needs breaks, how do they do breaks? Uh, so we just also educate, um, the teachers about Down syndrome more because they're general ed teachers. So I need to also um, educate them about, you know, because they love, you know, they love the inclusion and they know that it's important. And so we're very lucky with her teachers that they're so also open. But of course, we can't expect everyone to be a, a expert on Down syndrome. So or how, or how people with Down syndrome will learn or how they understand things. So they've been very accommodating on how, like, how do uh, we modify the tests to test, uh, you know, to test her knowledge. And I think teachers also appreciate that when you can guide them. Um, like, for example, when she was in preschool, they were testing her, um, her exam would be in color, or her exam would be count how many Disney princesses there are. And for me, I know that the, just seeing the different Disney princesses or seeing the colors will be very distracting for her so it's easier for her for just to count black circles you know or just just the same shape it's easier for her to count or she might start thinking of like especially if it's her favorite disney princess or if they're different characters she doesn't understand that they're all disney princesses and you just want the number of how many but if you have the, all the same black circles it's one less way of thinking but you're still testing if she knows the concept of the numbers of counting numbers so it's, that's like one of the examples. So that's what when we, we do with her exams. Um, she has 11 subjects since first grade. So including Mandarin, Filipino, business, business, man, uh, sorry, business math and um, all her other classes. So, um, you know, we have a lot on our plate, but we try to say like what's important, what we need her to learn. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, we were, if, in the Philippines, even though we are delayed, uh, we are be behind other countries in terms of education for people with Down syndrome. Um, I'll say by like maybe two to three decades, but fortunately we are making progress. We are moving. We need more people to advocate. Like I said, we need more teachers. Um, we need the government help, but instead of just waiting for the government to help, which we is something out of our control, uh, we decided that you know we want to do the best that we can for our our kids um, as co-parents. So we have a team of co-parents, and you know, you can have your own community to to help to do this as well. So this is something that's um, very important: is that to keep educating people, including your family members. You know, don't ever be embarrassed of your child. Don't ever be feel like you have to apologize or you have to uh, not include your child because they might be too rowdy like joey goes everywhere that we go um she she's in she's included in everything um we we always take her out we don't keep her home because that also stimulates their thinking it also puts them in situations where they know how to how to act and um, i think that's the next slide please i think that might be the last slide so i would like to thank you everyone for your time and especially thank you to people that are doing the sign language for us. That's so useful. And it's a, and thank you for, um, I know it's tiring and I speak fast. So thank you for that. And um, thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate that everyone is um, spending time and trying to make sure that we can create more awareness for people and their family and families that have people with Down syndrome. And um, did you want to say something, JC? What do you want to say about Down syndrome? Joe, JC is six years old. 
So she's always had a sister with Down syndrome because her sister's eight years old, right? So what do you want to say about Down syndrome? What's your experience? What, what do you want to share? It's hard for you to know what she's talking about sometimes, but it won't help if you just like you just like give up. You have to try and ask them to do it again or say it again. So it's hard sometimes to understand what she's saying or what she wants, but you can't yeah. give up on her. Mm -hmm. And you just keep asking her. Yeah. And you'll just try to say it a different way or try to guess what she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like about having a sister with Down syndrome? I like because if she didn't have Down syndrome, then she would be really mean to me. Because... <laughs> She'd be really mean to you? Yeah, because she's eight already. She's eight? Mm -hmm. So one thing that we know that Joey is like a great ate, huh? Mm -hmm. She loves you. Like um, just having lunch earlier today, Joey out of nowhere would just say, I love you, JC. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so she has a sister that totally loves her, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, um, you know, we, we know that our children are like everyone else, um, but they do, they are very lovable and she does um, see the good in everybody. So she loves her little sister a lot and they don't argue a lot, huh? Oh, we sometimes do, sometimes, but not a lot. Not a lot, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's that's our family life. And, um, of course, you can always find uh, Miss Possibilities, the Facebook page, and you can always look for my name on Facebook. I'll be happy to help with any questions that you that you may have or um, anything that you need support with. So just please let us know. Hello, so thank you so much, Mrs. Yuzon, for your wonderful words. As she stated, we should remember her acronym CELEBRATE. So that stands for comfort, early intervention, loving your child, expecting the best from all, believing in them, raising your child like all others, being an advocate, teaching life skills, and educating others. And we can use those to help us be more sensitive to those with Down syndrome. Besides that, it would also help us learn how to make those with Down syndrome feel more included in society. Moreover, as one of Mrs. Yuzon's daughters, Jay-Z said, we shouldn't give up on them. Also to our viewers, don't feel shy to place any questions or queries that you have for our speakers. Yes, just comment down below if you have any questions. What a wonderful thoughts from Mrs. Yuzon and her daughter. So at first, I was actually thinking what the celebrating in the extra chromosomes means. And it's pretty amazing that the word celebrate has literally meaning and connects with it. So maybe um, I think one, in, one major insight, insight that I get is about having a support system. The support system is very important as having a strong support or emotional support as she was mentioned earlier, it gives a positive benefit, not only for the child, but also for the parents. Anyway, let us introduce the final speaker. She was a former project-based technical reviewer, mental health at work program in Project Inclusion Network. Also, she's the current TIGIG ADHD family and community support group. She is a forester. She is currently studying Master's in Business Administration in Taguig City University. She will discuss growing people, shaping a community, building a nation. Please let us give a virtual warm applause to Forrester Mona Lisa Labitoria Desperas.
Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. So let me start my presentation with this. Uh, young women of Sparta Dalpo knows full well that they have a responsibility to raise strong citizens for their country. Yung mga anak po natin, with or without disability, are human capital of our country. So I hope as Filipino parents, we also recognize our duty and our task, and that we have a moral obligation to raise empowered citizens, even if our children have disabilities, they have to be global citizens for our country and the world. Next slide, please. So the family that serves together stays together. I bring my kids into a lot of outreach activities for persons with disability because I believe that it is my responsibility to make sure that I raise community conscious uh, children. So um, my son is there, uh, my eldest. He was diagnosed with autism and my youngest was diagnosed with ADHD. I'm a mother of uh, four kids. Uh, as earlier said, I am a forester, so I don't have a PhD in medicine, education, or occupational therapy. Uh, what's a forester? A uh, forester is a farmer of trees and forest ecosystems. And I'm also a former banker. However, I got my 10,000 hours of teaching and caring for children. Uh, kailangan daw po ano, 10,000 hours to be really good at uh, something. So I don't have uh, an experience raising a child with Down syndrome to expose to done through relatives and friends and we've uh, also encountered uh, children with Down syndrome sa communities we serve. Uh, what I will share is how I've taken care of my own children with disabilities and lead them to a form of success. Uh, nourishing our children, caring for them, and providing the right environment for our children to flourish. Uh, wala pa akong PhD, but I got a story to tell. So we all have stories to tell. And nasa Bible po, as iron sharpens iron, so does man sharpen another man. So may God use us to sharpen each other today. Pag po mas stress, uh, Di pa, Pastor, I just, uh, this is how I make sense of things. I, I hope you'll hear me out on this. And I hope this can be a safe space for us to learn and exchange ideas. I will share my strategies of leading my children with or without disabilities, helping them cope and thrive, and them coping with us. And helping us cope and thrive with them. And next slide. And grow. And also growing a community that supports that growth. And raising community champions, not just for my children, but for other children with disability like them. And other families with children with disabilities like us. It takes a village to raise a child. So, yun po. Yung ujima daw po is a Swahili word meaning collective work and responsibility. So what we're going to do to actually raise our children is raise up a community that supports them. So parang kagaya nung bayan ni Han word natin. So next slide. Yung bayan ni Han word from the word bayani is hero. We can create caring communities for our children. We can be the hero that they need. We can be the hero that each child needs, especially those with disability or special needs. In the picture, we would see different professions, similar to the different professions that we need in our child's team to raise them well. Lahat important and has a role to play. So you'll see may police, may cook, may teacher, may pare, may doctor, um, may, may fireman. Everyone is important in raising the kind of community that uh, we need to support 
children with disability, and eventually persons with disability. Next slide, please. So uh, as parents, uh, I believe we need to do a lot of uh, research. See, most of the time, our children stays at home. Yes, we bring them prof to professionals, we bring them to doctors, to therapy and all. But mas mahaba pa rin yung time na ni spend nila sa bahay. So, sab natatandaan ko yung sabi ng doctor ng anak ko, um, kung hindi daw namin isusupport yung therapy sa bahay, sasayang lang daw kami ng pera. So, uh, what did I do? I used Google. I made him my friend. So, kung hindi ko alam yung gagawin or how to support my child, I googled it. And to yun sa mga walang internet or ano, uh, sabi nga, kung gusto, maraming paraan. Kung ayaw, maraming dahilan. Sa bawat munisipyo po, may free internet access na kinakabit yung DICT. So, pag wala pa sa inyo, makipag-penpal po tayo sa Presidential Complaint Center and kindly ask them to ask the ICT to help our community in your behalf. Pwede po yun. Uh, wag pong mahiyang magtanong. We are actually saving government money by making sure that our children grow up to be productive citizens. Kasi instead of them spending 15% of GDP on welfare, our children can afford to pay taxes in the future if they are enabled to be productive citizens of our country. Sobrang na-inspire po ako dun sa um, uh, girl with Down syndrome na teacher na ngayon. She was able to finish college. Uh, I can uh, just imagine how empowered her parents are to really fight for the right of her child to receive that quality of life. And I believe na each parent should have that heart that will fight for the right of our child to, to lead empowered lives that they can be productive citizens of our country. I'm not asking that every one of us will be will have like a child like um, that girl. But I'm saying may talent yung isa-isa nating anak. At kung ano man yun, kailangan natin i-develop at palabasin para makapag-contribute sila sa lipunan natin. So, napakadami pong uh, resources online. Um, I, what I'm asking is we research and apply. So, apply po natin yung mga, mga nababasa natin. I've read this uh link there are 42 uh, resources i'm gonna show you uh, that later now pwede natin basahin para ma kumaga kaaga pa tayo ng doctor at therapist natin in raising our children so yon next slide please so hindi po ito science uh, lesson as uh, it says as genotype plus environment plus phenotype so yung genotype yun po yung genes ng um ng bawat tao, kasi yung environment na pinaprovide natin sa mga anak natin. And yun yung magiging itsura niya. Uh, Del Forester po ako, uh, binigyan ko <laughs> example na yan. So, yun. Um, I share this because I think parents of children with Down syndrome or children with disability in general, uh, this is important to bear in mind. It is not the genes alone that will control the outcome of our children's life. Huwag po tayong ma-stress if our children are dealt with a band hand sa genes nila. Kasi we can definitely control or have at least influence at least influence to control the environment of our children. We are homo sapiens thinking men. Yung mga bata nga na normal gets affected by their environment. So will our children. Let's work on the environment that will make our children thrive and flourish. This is where the farming analogy kicks in. Gives water, cultivate the soil, and fertilize. We have to guard our crops from pests and make sure there is ample sunlight. Um, so what does rolling up our sleeves mean? So we have to psych ourselves, our minds and hearts for the task at hand and actually do it. Yung water and fertilizer 
that is the food and nourishment that we provide our children. May resources po yung Food Nutrition Research Institute ng DOST for mura at super masustansyang food for our kids. Ako, sabagsakan po ako namimili at naglalakad po ako papuntang palengke para makatipin. <laughs> at exercise ko na din para pumayat ako. <laughs> so, how do we cultivate the soil around our kids? We provide a home atmosphere conducive to growth and development. We can provide them therapy. Uh, hindi po katwiran yung, wala kasi kaming pera. Kasi we can tap DSWD for therapy money. May services po sila called IKES or Assistance for Individuals in Crisis. And you can use that um, every quarter. I, I want to share this story. May nakasabay po kami ng anak ko sa PGH na mommy. May Down syndrome po yung anak nila. But nakaka-amaze yung mommy kasi hindi, wala pong developmental delay yung anak niya. Ginagawa daw po niya, pupunta siya sa lahat ng government services and private institutions na alam niya. At mingi siya ng tulong para ma-provide niya yung therapy na kailangan ng anak niya. Kasi sobrang hirap nila, nakatala lang sila sa ilalim ng tulay. Uh, but can you imagine yung heart ng nanay fighting for the right of her child to live a normal life? Um, nakakalungkot lang ang sinasabi ng uh, mami, hindi sila makauwi sa probinsya kasi walang hospital daw na kagaya ng PGH at hindi sila makakakuha ng therapy na nare-receive nila dito sa Manila doon sa probinsya nila. Uh, but I think um, how can, ang tanong sa akin is how can we help uh, mothers like her or parents like her i think it's important that we we vote based on merit platform and experience kasi sila naman yung mga binoboto natin sila nagde-decide eh, kung saan gagamitin yung uh, pera ng gobyerno uh, let's do away with personality politics and hold our leaders accountable to real public service kasi may move na po yung government to make more hospitals like PGH sa mga provinces so let's write our lawmakers and other decision makers to make that happen ASAP, as soon as possible. We can lobby, we can use our social media and other groups to magnify our voices. Um, let's all participate in community building. Yeah. So aside from that, we also have to guard our kids from pests or crops natin, kung anak natin yung crops natin. Ano yun? Yun yung mga negative influence sa buhay nila. Maka sobra na po sa gadget yung mga anak natin, sobra sa kain, kulang sa exercise, baka we are not modeling the right behavior for our child. Or we are allowing mass media to unduly mold our kids' behavior or be yaya for our kids. So mali po yun. We have to invest time for our children and safeguard them. Hindi lang yung physical nila, but pati yung pumapasok sa isip nila at sa puso nila. So, ano naman po yung sunlight? I think that uh, represents God. This limitless and immense power that surrounds us. Whatever we call that higher being, I believe we need to raise our children knowing how to tap into that. Just be connected with the Lord and everything would be fine. Next slide, please. So, yun. Yung symbol daw po for crisis and opportunity ng mga Chinese is pareho lang. So for me, ibig sabihin po pala, what defines a crisis as crisis or defines crisis as an opportunity is not the situation, but how we see it. Next slide, please. Yeah, so... Um, the truth is, nagkasakit po ako ng wagas pa ulit-ulit since my son was diagnosed um, ADHD, ADHD muna at first. Um, hindi ko po matanggap na my son had a uh, diagnosis. Uh, for me, he was perfect. Sa sobrang stress ko po after ma-diagnose yung anak ko, I got uh, laryngopharyngeal uh, reflux. Um, I got fever in my voice for two weeks. Uh, during that time, since nasa bahay lang po ako, as I've said earlier, I researched extensively about my son's condition. Kinaunawaan ko po what ADHD is. And I looked at all the possibilities. And I got to know a lot of great people with uh, ADHD, like Michael Phelps, uh, Fortney, na gold medals, diba? Um, si 
Justin Timberlake, Avin Levine, they're great artists. I'm sure they're all, also great uh, persons with uh, Down syndrome. I think we can use them as model for our children. Kasi, ganito daw po kasi, uh, dati daw po, hindi alam ng mga tao na kayang tumakbo ng isang tao ng one mile under four minutes. Pero nung nagawa na siya, ang dami ng sumunod. So I think, if we can raise our children to success, we're actually open up the, opening up the gates for other people to raise their children to success too. Um, so, as I said, the former banker po ako, uh, and we're always taught corporate skills are life skills. So what I did is I used, ano yung natutunan ko sa corporate um, experience ko, I developed our own KPI system at home. And uh, when I was attending seminars now with Autism Society Philippines, I was amazed that they're doing uh, something similar, what we were doing pala is something similar to teach or this way how to teach uh, non-verbal kids to um, new activities of uh, daily living nila. Uh, we, we don't know how any skills natin uh, we, that, that can significantly contribute to the development of our children but I am sure meron yun. I was really inspired with this um, story, uh, yung Lorenzo's Oil, na this parents, sabi ng mga doctors, wala nang pag-asa yung anak nila. But they really researched and, you know, put all the work to make sure that their child receives healing. So, I, I think we can do that too. Kung kaya nila, kaya din natin. Yeah. So, I want to share. Next slide. Um, so, this guy, he used his project management skills to help his son with cerebral palsy naman. It's amazing. Please watch it next time. This is a TED Talk. An innovative way to support children with uh, special needs. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is my second point. So first is research, and uh, second is focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. So I say focus on the capacity of our children and not the disability. See, after three years ako na-diagnose yung autism ng anak ko, but, but by that time, I'm super prepared na. Now, my son is in science class, uh, grade 7 na po siya. He's a consistent honor student. He won second place at Lingpan Lipo and FISB. He has won first place sa science uh, essay writing contest. Uh, my daughter was um, at first not able to read kasi she was diagnosed with uh, ADHD, possibly dyslexia. Nakakabasa na po. Uh, she was in the top of her class now is being trained to be a consistent for the math, a contestant for the math contest kasi magaling po siya sa math. Uh, hindi siya magaling masyado sa reading uh, before, but she's doing very well now. Very smart sa comp comprehension and analysis pa. Uh, we guided her and focused on her strength and supported her weakness, which was reading, so that it does not become a roadblock and now she's succeeding it. Um, ako din po, I'm a person with uh, lived experience. Uh, I was also diagnosed with adult ADHD, uh, depression and anxiety. Uh, I experienced uh, perinatal trauma daw po. I was uh, sexually abused as a child by a drug addict neighbor, um, bullied uh, over and over again to school and work. Uh, till I learned to find my voice. Um, and I was thinking those things are supposed to scar us, right? or crush me and my children, or uh, beat us up dead, pero it didn't. I believe the my experiences namin as a family is just made us stronger, better, smarter, and more fabulous. <laughs> um, the crisis has opened up a host of opportunities for me and my family. We are inspiring other people by our experiences on how we were able to pull our family together despite the setbacks. Uh, it has opened up a whole new, more profitable, more enjoyable career for me, and I am very happy. Uh, all praise and thanks be to God. Um, sadly, yung asawa ko po ay missing in action, but I believe we are not a broken family. Hindi naman po ako mag-aanak ng apat kung hindi ko mahal yun. Uh, we pray for him. Uh, I pray for him. I love him. Um, 
But I believe our experiences, uh, minds and my children's, actually allowed us to be better and more whole now than before. Me and my four children, we are whole. So yung mga mommy and daddy, working for the betterment of their children together, good job po kayo. Salute. Hats off. So for solo parents out there like me, I, I realized with all my advocacy work naman, dami po palang um, parents of children with disability na solo parents to bail out yung mga mommy or dad. Anyway, I, what I wanna say is wag po tayo ma-depress or mawala ng pag-asa. If all things fail, success is the best revenge. <laughs> Joke lang po yan. Nakaka-stress po yung um, nag-iisa tayo ng makaganti or something. Uh, but the thing is, God can turn our mess into a message. Find the opportunity in the crisis. Sabi po ng lolo ko, if we are not part of the solution, we are part of the problem. What happened was not a setback, but a send-off. Yung anak ko po inaayawan ng teacher before, ngayon favorite na siya, di ba? <laughs> um, for our children, are we creating the right environment for helping them succeed in the God-given talents that they have. We should be our children's champion. Help them find where they are good at. Consider multiple intelligence and celebrate our children's gifts. This is really not uh, a story about us, but the capacity of the human beings to thrive despite setbacks. It's about the neuroplasticity of our brains, a wonderful machine and tool gifted to us by the Lord. It's about our ability to heal, to grow, and to inspire, and how we can be a force for good and change for our communities. So next slide, please. I just want to show you some resources I googled uh, sa Coursera.org. Dahil nga po mahilig ako mag-research to support my children. Uh, this one, Supporting Children with Difficulties in Reading and Writing. Uh, this is free if you don't want certificates, just know. Importante lang naman matuto tayo. Um, ayan, could you see it? Uh, and then... Ayan, Severe to Profound Intellectual Disability, Circles of Care and Education. Tapos yung pong next, uh, Disability Inclusion and Education, Building Systems of Support. Yeah. So, ito po yung nabanggit ko kanina, 42 great uh, Down syndrome resources that you should know about. Uh, check po natin. Uh, yeah, I think we really need to educate ourselves so that we can help our children better. Yun. And um, yung last point ko po is about self-care. So, uh, self-care using the six dimensions of wellness, namely emotional, occupational, physical, social, intellectual, and spiritual. Bakit six? Ang dami naman. Kasi uh, we are organic beings. We are not linear. This we need integrated systems of health din. We cannot give what we do not have. And uh, nakita ko po na the more I take care of myself, mas naalagaan ko po yung mga anak ko. At pag stressed ako, stressed din sila. So, I have to be happy so they can be happy. Pag nagkakagulo yung mga anak ko, instead of magalit or ma-stress ako sa kanila, I look first at myself. Magulo ba ako? More often than not, ako po yung magulo. Kaya magulo yung anak ko. When I fix myself, regulate myself, mas natuturoan ko po yung mga anak ko mag-self-regulate din. And as we care for ourselves, we can use the same care for our children. Next slide, please. Uh, yung sa emotional wellness po. So, uh, for emotional wellness, if we are having painful feelings about our child's disability uh, or condition, please seek help, counseling, or even mentoring. Pag ayo pa rin, please seek professional help. Hindi po masama yun. There is no help without mental health. Kasama po yun. Ayon po sa UN, uh, stress is linked to 7 out of 10 leading cause of death in the Philippines. 
So if we don't take care of ourselves, who would take care of our children? So we need to learn to self-regulate positively so we can teach our child to self-regulate positively. Learn catharsis. Google po yun. Uh, it's a way of healing. To learn something, to be able to teach it. Yeah. Yung uh, next po is social wellness. Uh, I just want to share this word. Ubuntu daw po means I am because we are. Which is meaning shared sense of humanity. I understand, no? Hirap po magkarap, magkaroon ng anak na may disability. But we can always ask for help. I joined a lot of support groups to help me manage my children's condition. Until now, Ms. Kina, they seem okay. I still join family support group. Uh, kung wala pong support group sa lugar nyo, gawa po tayo. Let's pull each other up. Uh, di ko naman po tinataas yung sarili ko or yung group namin sa Taguig or yung group sa province. Uh, but we have made considerable effort and uh, we've really made an impact. I am trolling for a cause. Uh, I would scout FB for useful news uh, for everyone, especially about persons with disability and share it sa mga groups ko. And ako mismo nagugulat na ang dami ko na palang support. I am just a mother. Again, I don't have PhDs or anything, but I used what I have to reach out and somebody reached back. We can use community support groups, school support groups, and even church support groups. Salihan natin kung ano yung kaya natin. We need to get our communities right for our children. Network with people, private and public, and even government officials like mayors, uh, yeah, you can, um, <laughs> please click next. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, doon na po tayo sa social wellness dun sa, um, next. Next. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so yun po yung binanggit kong word kanina. Uh, go back. <laughs> so, yun. Um, we can network with mayors, councillors, and PIDAW. May memo po recently yung DILG about having CSOs or civil society organizations be part of the local council. Please read, read din po yung Mandana ruling. Uh, kasi tataas daw po ng 45% yung budget ng mga LGU. So we know ano ba yung services na we can expect from our community. Let's volunteer. We can share ideas about projects for persons with disabilities, children with disabilities through the annual investment plan ng barangay at bayan natin. Have our kids volunteer. In our family, we were able to catch up three years and 10 months of behavioral delay. In one year, what did I do? I brought my son to mga outreach events, seminars, and a person with disability events sa Taguig. So altruism is the best form of therapy. Tumulong kami sa kapwa, pero kami talaga yung natulungan ng nangyari. Okay. So next is physical wellness. So this is easy enough to understand. But I understand also na hard to do. But we really need to discipline ourselves to work at it. Yung nutrition natin, sleep, are we sleeping, mindset, lifestyle choices. How do we care for ourselves when we are sick? Do we exercise? Kasi our, our second brain is our gut daw po or yung chan. What we eat affects our moods. Make sure that we eat healthy food. Uh, being vegan or even slightly vegan is matipid. Pati bulsa natin, magiging healthy. I used to be 72 kilograms. Uh, hindi ko na po nakikita yung mata ako pag nakatayo ako. But, um, after 10 years, 63 kilograms na lang ako. Anyway, I'm not saying na uh, 10, 10 years talaga bago tayo mag-lose ng weight. But I'm saying is huwag mawalan ng pag-asa. Po. So, next slide please. Occupational wellness. 
So we need to do what we love. Una sa sarili natin and then for our child. Uh, find our purpose and sense of accomplishment, uh, professional growth and development, job satisfaction and fulfillment. We need to find a job we enjoy and so that we will never have to work a single day in our life. Each of us has a gift, a talent to share with the world. We have to find that. Alam ko na yung anak natin would not, may, may not be great athletes like uh, Michael Jordan or may not be as smart as Stephen Hawking. Kasi alam na, ano siya, di ba? Um, talagang paralyzed from the neck down. But, but, miskin na, yung talent lang natin is magluto ng turon. Pero siya yung pinakamasarap magluto ng turon sa buong purok natin. That's already something. We need to support our child. Yun. Um, ano ba yung talent? Meron akong nakausap na sabi niya, yung anak daw niya, ang talent na eh, uh, showing love and care for other people. I think, ano, uh, her child can be a caregiver in the future. Natin alam. Naniniwala ako na may purpose si God sa bawat isa. At miski na may disability yung anak natin, may purpose din si God for them. So, we, we, again, we just need to find that. Allow our child to experience a form of success on their own. Sabi po ni John Maxwell sa so Law of the League, uh, 75% of successful people have success, successful parents. But 25% broke the mold and became successful themselves. We can choose to be the parents that makes it easier for a child to succeed. And we can choose to be the 25% that broke the mold and became successful even if we came from a limited background. So, tayo, ginalingan natin, even hindi maganda pinanggalingan natin, and we were able to raise above from what we have. And by doing that, by making that sacrifice, it will be easier for our children to find a level of success on their own. Ano man yun. So, I, I want to share an assignment dahil po nagtuturo ako before. Uh, please read the poem uh, Our Deepest Fear by Marian uh, Williamson. Yeah. So, uh, next, uh, Intellectual Wellness. Next, yeah. Uh, so, this is linked with the first point I raised, which was research. Re learning is a lifelong process. Um, in this case, uh, yung learning daw po is the fountain of youth. So I think if this is true, this is way cheaper than Bello, right? Let me share this story. I have this mentor. She's 63 years old. Um, lahat ng buhok niya white, pero yung skin niya is amazing. Di ba not, um, the artificial she has this glow of wisdom in her. Ang daming PhDs ni Madam. <laughs> Kaya mag-PhD din po ako. Baka sakaling gumawa pa ako. <laughs> anyway. Um, but, but I think um, more than uh, the superficial uh, beauty, meron talagang beauty na nanggagaling sa kalooban if we have uh, wisdom and, and the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yun. And leading to the last wellness, which is um, spiritual wellness. So, I read this book sa Bible, sa Ecclesiastes. Hindi po daw natin tunay na mauunawaan yung planong ng Panginoon sa kabuuan. It's too big for us to understand. And I agree. Uh, hindi ko po talaga maunawaan kung bakit nangyari yung mga bagay na yun, nung bata ko, bakit ako nagkaanak ng may disability, bakit sumakbilang something yung asawa ko. But may plano ang Diyos. Say po dun sa Sam, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So, bago pa daw mangyari, alam na ni God. I think this is really true. I could not have designed my life like this. I could not have designed my children to be like that. But with disability, without disability, 
They are simply amazing. And I marvel at God's doing. So John 9 verse 3, sabi po doon, Uh, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God may be displayed in him. This is part of the story about the blind man that Jesus healed. So, hindi mo pala parusa yung anak natin. Hindi, hindi sila malas. They have that so that the works of God may be displayed in them. Maybe God is using our family to minister to people, right? We don't know. Uh, but whatever it is, ora et labora. Pray and work. Pray and work so that God may reveal His purpose in our life. So, uh, recap po tayo. So, next slide. Uh, first, uh, learn, research, seek wisdom, knowledge is power. Uh, two, we need to have a paradigm shift, pagbabago ng pananaw. C, the opportunity, not the crisis. It's the same thing, but look at things in a different perspective. And three, holistic view of health. Tingnan natin yung health natin sa kabuuan. Six dimensions of wellness. And please remember three words. Ujima. So, meaning, collective work and responsibility. Bayanihan, we have to be hero for our kids and children like them in the community. The more we help others, the more we help ourselves. Ubuntu, I am because we are. We have a shared humanity. With or without disability, we are all primarily persons. Uh, let me leave you with this. Uh, may kasabihan po, when life gives us lemons, make lemonade, right? I suggest, when life gives us lemons, make lemonade. Tapos, isave yung buto, itanim, make a lemon plantation, and we can make even more lemonade. May verse po sa Bible. It says, unless a seed or butil ng wheat, maybe you can use uh, palay, butil ng palay falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Um, the reflection ko dito is, uh, maybe I have to die to the image of what I should be or the, of what my children should be. I have to die to my yabang and everything holding me back to become the best parent, best caregiver, best support system for my children. And if, if I do that, I allow my children to bloom and blossom and inspire other people and produce much fruit for our community and our society. And that is the challenge I leave everyone uh, today, that uh, we can die to the image of what our children should be, of what we should be, and uh, we could die to our yabang and be the best parent, best caregiver, best support system for our children so that together we can shape our community and be a strong foundation in building our nation. Thank you so much. Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat.
Hello. Hi. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for your talk today. Like, I really appreciated what you shared with us. And I think that the Bible verses and the other verses that you also mentioned would really be helpful for us to understand what's going on and like act as a guide for us to be able to help those like in our community and as well as being sensitive to them. Thank you. Any... <laughs> Steph, what can you say about what Miss Vesperas told us today? Well, I think from all the Bible verses and the quotes that she mentioned a while ago, Siguro, one thing that struck me the most is we have a moral obligation to raise and empower citizens. Well, yes, because I, I also believe that it is also important to promote advocacy like this about the Down syndrome to ensure that their voices are heard on the issues that are important for them, as well as empower the citizens to support and be aware of children with Down syndrome. Moving forward, let's show everyone the incoming activities of Hands and Inclusion for its fourth year anniversary. Well, let us begin with their upcoming premiere video on March 8, 2021 on all their social media platforms. This video will be more on greetings from some people who are believing in the spirit of one inclusion nation. Ngayon, nagbago ang mundo, buo pa rin ang tapang natin. Ngayong ikaapat na anibersaryo, may bagong tapang sa One Inclusion Nation. Also, Hanson Inclusion will conduct another webinar, Usaping Inclusion sa Kababaihan, webinar series of Hanson Inclusion Filipinas. It will happen on March 27, 2021 from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Facebook Live via Hanson Inclusion Filipinas Facebook page. Details to be followed by March 7, 2021. Yeah, so these are the two surprises for the fourth year anniversary of Hands in Inclusion. Aside from their preparation for the fourth year anniversary, they are continuously selling merchandise. Yes, they are selling a lot. So first off, we have t-shirts with various designs. So we have various designs that we're going to show via PowerPoint. So... In case the PowerPoint doesn't come due to technical difficulty, I'll just tell you some of the designs that we have. So they have a design such as <laughs> like to include puzzles in hands, helping PWDs, inclusion of all, Bagong Tapang, and all those designs will be offered in black and white shirts except for the H&I banner design that will only be given in the white shirt design. All shirts will be ranging from sizes small to extra large. For the white shirts, they will range from 430 to 460 pesos. Meanwhile, the black shirts will range from 450 to 480 pesos. To add a personal touch, you can have customized text placed in the back for just 50 pesos. Yes, and they are also selling H&I tote bags available in three designs and colors sizes small to large, ranging from 220 to 260 pesos, and additional 50 pesos for the text at the back. Yes, they too have three sticker designs that you can pick from to show your support for their organization. And lastly, Inclo mugs offered in white and black designs as seen in the screen for only 200 pesos. For item reservations, you may contact the Hanson Inclusion Facebook page. If you'd like to purchase any of these merchandise, you can pay them via GCash and PayMaya only. But wait, you may also donate via GCash and PayMaya for cash donations. Wow, thank you so much for that surprise announcement, Steph. It's nice to know that we can also help the organization through donations. For the viewers, don't forget that you can comment 
to your questions and that if you want to learn more and ask the speakers any questions even after this webinar you can message the Hanson Inclusion Facebook page to forward your message to our speakers yeah so don't be shy to just message the page if you have any questions having said that um may we call on our the founder and the current president of Hanson Inclusion, Mr. Ryland Merlang, for the awarding of certificates to the speakers. A warm round of applause for our speakers. Before we conclude, Sir Ryland will give his final remarks of the, this webinar. So going back to this webinar, I think I can say that we've learned a lot. Don't you, Steph? Yes. Based from the um, talks that we, we had earlier, Sigura, for me, I really learned from the second speaker, like um, the celebrating with the extra chromosomes because I mean, it's pretty cool and amazing talaga for me that those letters um, coordinate with how they should see or take care of the um, children's with the Down syndrome. That's true. And I love how many of our speakers always emphasize that we shouldn't treat them differently and that we should always see them as our equals. Yes. Yeah. As the last speaker mentioned earlier, that with or without, we are just the same. Like we, we are all the same persons with or without the disability. Oh, everyone, by the way, viewers, if you guys have questions, we also have our speakers back to answer some of your questions and inquiries in regards to what they talked about today. Feel free to comment down below if you have any questions. Let let um let me plug na lang daw na din po one of the groups I have, which is the ASEAN Enabling Master Plan. Um, habang nagawait ng mga questions, ah, uh, nakatuwa lang po don kasi um they're advocating for four focus for the Philippines, which is um education, employment, participation, and accessibility, and um. I believe lang na sa bawat barangay, bawat puro, bawat eskwelahan, bawat bayan, oh, we should have that. Eh. Uh, this group that you have, this is amazing. Uh, sana nga you, you can ano, parang reach out to more people to the and be inspired by what you do. And parang they can have local versions of uh, this. Para, uh, you can have more impact. <laughs> Kasi ano eh, um, people think na pag sinabing children with disability, pang mayaman lang yun. But actually, there are various studies na mas madaming children with disability coming from poor families. It's just that they're not properly diagnosed or they're hidden from uh, mainstream. Uh, siguro yung mga anak namin were just uh, lucky kasi um, we, we got resources, we got them properly diagnosed and they're able to integrate to mainstream society. But our children should not be the exception. Rather, it should be yung norm. <laughs> yeah. Share ko lang. I'm actually just curious, Mrs. Susan, are you there? Hi. <laughs> so I heard that you, the president, right now, on responsibilities. 
Is that right? Yes. So um, I have a friend who is actually part of one of your projects, the Miss Possibilities um, campaign. And I was actually yes. curious to know what more about it. Like, besides the pageant, what other projects does the organization have? Uh, for Miss Possibilities, it's for people of all different needs. Um, so actually, uh, we have we started with co-parents founding the part about just I had an idea about doing a pageant because of my past, and so I wanted to do a pageant. And then from then on, we've just grown. So we also have a celebrity fashion show, which is also done on the same day. And like I said, our concept is really just to celebrate all the differences and to celebrate how they are. So it's not only acceptance. Um, it's really to celebrate, uh, to really to give them more. Uh, for, for me, um, I, we, we try to always have that in mind in all of our projects. Uh, so we have medical missions. Stockholm and Milan have also part of our medical missions to vow. Uh, we've done um, therapies, free therapy clinics, free medical missions. Uh, we do free uh, horseback riding, which is hippotherapy, therapy for the kids. Um, we have a number of projects um, and activities throughout the year. So it depends on it, if it fits like what age group. Um, but we also do uh, with it to promote just also to like also create awareness. Um, one of the main things that we do this for is it's free for everybody. So we don't have like a membership fee. We don't have anything. It's just free that you can follow us on our Facebook page. And then we just take as many kids as we can. And um, whoever signs up first, it's like first come, first serve. So for us, that's what we really want to do is just for families, for communities to not only to be aware, not to only to accept, but as we said, to really celebrate, to really see that they, they are blessings. As Miss um, Mona was saying that, you know, God doesn't make mistakes and he already has this all planned out of why they're here and why they're here to teach us. Um, there's so much that they can teach us. So uh, that's what Miss Possibilities is about, is that uh, you will see as you know, you see that all our children are, they have differently, they have different abilities. They're also, they're all differently abled in different ways. Even if they have the same diagnosis, their personalities and their abilities are so different and their likes and their talents are so different, even with the same diagnosis. So we just want um, the community to give them a chance. Um, to not, like as you as Ms. Mona was saying, I think that you know, um, not everyone has the ability to get the therapist, to get to the right doctors, to get the right di diagnosis. So the community should also come out and and support with that, and help with that also. So that's what Miss Possibility is about. We we are about six years old now, and so we've just been growing as with the community as a um, as co-parents, and um, not only co-parents but also people that care, volunteers, no one is on salary. So it's all volunteer basis. And um, it's it's just really wonderful to see how the, the whole community, including our celebrities have always come out and supported us. Um, so that's that's great to see that it's, we can help people and we include people on all different social, social economic levels too. That's really amazing. And I'm really happy that there are more organizations now coming to help people feel more included in society. How about you, Steph? Do you have any like questions or inquiries you'd like to ask our speakers today? Well, actually, I don't have any questions to mind based from the um, talk. It's just, I appreciate that how they talk, like they're very passionate with their advocacies and how they share their stories so that the people can be aware of their experiences also. All right, so again, for from our viewers, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Or if you have any questions, like um, you're shy to type, you can just message the Facebook page of Hands of Inclusion so that they can ask our speakers. Oh, 
I actually do. I actually received, there's actually a question right now. And the question is, what is inclusion for you? Is, is this for anyone? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is for anyone. <laughs> I'll let Ms. Mona start first. Yeah. Um, inclusion for me is uh, capacitating each person to participate. Um, you see, we all have um, our, our level of um, strengths and weaknesses, diba? and so corporate lagi sila sabi na uh, our team our team is only as strong as the weakest link so i think sa inclusion we have to uh, parang team di ba isa forward isa center iba iba kayo ng roles pero lahat yon important and you all include everyone and you uh, play together play to each other's strengths so that for me is inclusion. We play to each other's strengths. We include everyone. We recognize the talent of that person. And that we do not say na oh, kasi malit ka hindi ka nakasama. Oh, ano yun? Kasi niyatin alam mo henyo palasya, de ba? Yung pala yung and we also um, look at it at as um, multiple intelligence. So yun ah. Uh, as I've said earlier, we, we focus on the capacity, not the disability. And we just pull everyone together to, to, to work together for a common goal. Yeah. Yun yung conclusion for me. Right. 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 So for me, inclusion is similar to what Ms. Mona said. But for inclusion, uh, sometimes we just think it's just to be included, right? But I think our, the way our minds work, how we compartmentalize, like just our typical brains that we like to, like you said, like, okay, um, you know, even we don't always include everybody, you know, we Ooh. Anyway, I think she's experiencing some technical difficulties also. Siguro for me, as a student, um, inclusion for me is that regardless of um, abilities or disabilities or any healthcare needs, um, they have the right to be respected and appreciated as value, valuable members of the society. How about you, Lexi? Oh, thank you for the wonderful question. <laughs> um, I think that similar to what our speakers have said, it's not solely about including them into things, but I think it's also helping everyone get what they need. So there's this thing I've heard about equity versus equality. Equality is giving everyone the same thing. Well, um, on the other hand, we have equity that focuses on giving people what they need. So more specific to make sure that everything is adjusted to their needs. And I think that inclusion includes that. Because I feel that if we don't have equity and give everyone what they need, it would be hard for everyone to be productive and feel needed in society. Right, right. That's correct. And also... Add to that, it's about how embracing this is about video. Right. Okay, so we have another question. So, good afternoon, po. What is Down syndrome for you? So, you can answer from me. I was I, I, for, for me, Down syndrome, um, aside from like the medical definition that we will get from uh, our doctors like Dr. De Malanta. Um, but personally for me, Down syndrome, I think it has changed. Before it was that medical term, it was a condition. Uh, but then as, we, as it, it has become part of our life, it has been a blessing. Down syndrome has really been a blessing. And um, 
we can I can honestly true like wholeheartedly say that uh, you know sometimes um, like what Miss Mona was saying before we don't know God's plan but you know uh, but then like we just we just let it happen it it really is God's plan that He's trying to teach us something something will come some good will come out of it but also so as to pray and also labor as Miss Mona said like we have to. by God without us working as well and without us helping our own children as well. All right. So we um, all have is Down syndrome learning and learning or an intellectual disability. It's actually both. Um, it's also a learning disability and an intellectual disability. My definition of it is because I'm I have a grade school student, so uh, I know that she um, she learns differently. I know that she learns slower, uh, and I know that it is an intellectual disability because that's what's creating her to learn to learn differently or to learn slower. Also, so I think because of her intellectual disability, her learning disability, her learning ability is affected. So it might be different for someone um, as Ms. Monison was ADHD because they're not, they don't have intellectual disability as, as, but they might, they don't have intellectual delays, but they might have learning disabilities or dyslexia. You don't have intellectual, but for Down syndrome, I think it's both because once you have intellectual disability, you will, it, it will be harder for you to learn. Anything to add, Ms. Mona? I agree to what uh, Ms. Yuson said earlier. But um, it's it can be both for for some people. Eh. Um, siguro for me lang yung question sa mind ko. Kasi, uh, yung, yung work ko kasi uh, bilang problem solver, paano kaya natin ma, ma, ma-compensate yung, yung mga bata with uh, intellectual disability so that uh, we can make more uh, children with Down syndrome, like, I think her name is Brianna ba? Tama ba yung naging teacher? She was able to finish college. So, I mean, to training. So, Kung yung yeah. isang person, it's Rina, you know? Rina, yeah, Rina. Diba amazing? So, kasi kung meron ka sa isang team, diba nakita mo yung isang person, meron siyang best practices, yung goal mo is, as a leader, is paano mo ma- maipapakopya yung best practices nung magaling mong staff dun sa iba. Parang ituturo mo yung ginagawa niya dun sa iba. So, I'm thinking, ano kaya yung ginawa ng parents ni Rina? para ma-overcome niya yung uh, intellectual disability niya na pwedeng gayahin ng ibang parents din with uh, Down syndrome para ma-overcome din nila yung uh, challenges nila. Yun. Anyway. <laughs> um, I think magandang pag-aralan yun. Maybe si Dr. Francis can help us. <laughs> um, if you... Are there any more questions from the viewers? Steph, I'll, I'll think- share while we're, if, we're, if we're waiting for questions. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll share with, like for, like what uh, the, the example of Brina Maxino. Uh, I actually know the family. And for, for Brina, I think it's like what everything we've been talking about today. It's the support. Her, her, her family, especially her father, is like her biggest advocate. Like he... You know, when we have the happy walk for the Down syndrome awareness, we always think we'll bring up a whole barangay. Like he has had asked everyone to come. You know, even if, uh, so this uh-huh. one whole part of the whole stage is going to be for doing that. Um, so aside from that, uh-huh. the schooling, he chose to 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 a smaller school. He's also given me advice. So we like, he chose a smaller school. Um, but, you know, after the regular she also, he said that she also spent three to four hours a day. 
<laughs> so for me, it's like, you know, like I said, Ms. Mo, she really had to be, you know, because of the learning disability and intellectual yeah. disability, she, she really had to work so much harder. And um, that's what our kids are like, you know, it's not impossible, but we have to understand it. They have to work so much harder. So in turn, as parents or as guardians, we also have to work so much harder. You know, we, um, if we expect more from them. So we, we have to also give that extra time. Um, I, I have um, a typical child and I have one with Down syndrome and the typical six years old and the one with Down syndrome is eight. I can easily <laughs> see a big difference especially with online school. The six-year-old, I can just leave her now because she knows how to log in, log out. You know, there's a big difference. So as Ms. Mona was saying that, you know, parents really need support. I can't imagine even more like single parents. They really need support with this, with their kids. Yeah, he feels you. <laughs> I so feel you there. Na iba yung batang may disability sa hinden. You really have to spend more time yeah. to the the uh, child that needs more support. Let's just try. Ginyan din kami with the system that we have. Yung schooling natin ngayon. It seems that Dr. Aiden Malanta is here. Okay. Hello. Thank so, you. We were actually asked some questions. And Hello, po. Good afternoon, Doc. Yes. We'd love to hear your input on it. So, as said, um, you have um, PJ Albia who asked, is Down syndrome a learning or intellectual disability? Um, we don't hear you as much, Dr. De Malanta. Hello. Don't see me. I'll answer anyway. So first, in the strictest sense of the word, Down syndrome is an example of an intellectual disability, which used to be called mental retardation. And as, as I said in my lecture earlier, we are not calling it mental retardation anymore uh, because it is an intellectual disability. It's the, it's the, like the prototype of what intellectual disability is. However. Since this is a range, there's a mild, moderate, severe, and profound, and about 20% may have very mild disabilities that they can finish high school, college, pursue any degree that they want. So that's the strict sense of the word. However, um, there, there are some who may have a learning disability. The difference between both, so that everybody will know, is that when you have a child who has a... A uh, normal IQ, but poor school performance, that's a learning disability. One who has low IQ and low performance, then that becomes your intellectual disability. So there are variations. And for me, it's more of what can your child do? I don't even believe in this, all these standardized tests that limit your child. Would mom, Moms, would you agree with me? So it's finding uh, yes, no. your child... <laughs> place in the sun. There are some more exceptional artists like draw, kumakanta, nagpa-perform. So yes, we need this and many schools always ask this from us and we tell them it's a range and they always want uh, what level, what level, what IQ. So para sa akin, parang over the 20 years that I've been practicing, let's not put them in a box. Let's, let's find out what can they do that others can't. You've seen children with Down syndrome who are who can memorize lines, who are artistas, de ba? Meron yun sa sa Glee, sa Glee yata yung yung isa. Then a, a lot of them have finished uh, schooling. So again, uh, there are many possibilities. That's why there is a miss possibilities, right, Susana? <laughs> That's why you put it up because again, let's see <clears throat> all the different abilities and now focus on the disability. All right, thank you for the answers. So I think there are questions from our viewers. So thank you so much 
um, for our speakers for your wonderful answers. They're all connected and brilliant. And having said that, may we call on the founder and current president of Hands in Inclusion, Mr. Roland Marlac, for the awarding of certificates to the speakers. What are you wearing? Let me see. Let me see how cute you are. Show me how cute you are. Oh, boy. So while waiting, I just want to say thank you again to our speakers for spending the time to really educate us and inform us more about Down syndrome. I'd also like to take the time to thank our interpreters, Ms. Daja and Sir Teng. I know it's hard <laughs> for really taking the time to really interpret and to make sure that everyone can understand the messages that we're trying to share today. Yes, yeah, so this webinar is very useful and informative because of um, it, it lets the people to know about the experiences and also um, what's, what's the meaning of the down. His valuable participation in Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Dr. Francis Xavier de Malanta in recognition of his valuable participation in connecting with Down syndrome and its advocates. Given this 27th day of February 2021, signed yours truly, Rylan Marlang and Christian Gerald Chan. Also, also, Certificate of Appreciation is awarded Hi. <laughs> Oh, hi. Oh, hi. 
Bye bye. <laughs> What's your name? Jerry. Oh, Jerry. No, my name's Johanna Lisa. My name's Johanna Lisa. Oh, you're so cute. Hello. <laughs> What do you say? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm down to be. Can you hear that. me now? Hello. 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 Can, can you add? Can, like can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I will read na lang. Ah. I will read na lang. Okay. So, Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to the following people. So, Dr. Francis Dimalanta, Miss Susana Yuson, and Miss Mona Bisperas in recognition of their valuable participation with connecting with Down syndrome and its advocates. Given this February 27, 2021, signed by Christian Chan and yours truly. Hi. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, I'd like to give a warm round of applause for our speakers and to my fellow co-host, Steph, and as well to our interpreters and those who have made this webinar possible today. But before we conclude, I'd like to call back Sir Royland to give his final remarks to this webinar. Thank you. 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 So, Steph, while we're waiting for Sir Royal to shut up, I just want to ask you what's your favorite part of today, like today's webinar specifically? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, my favorite part of the girl was the um, during the second talk, because I really learned about that. And the fun fact, like for example, the March 1 to 1 thing. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I really, I really love how, like what I said a while ago, I really love how right now we're told to really celebrate everyone and not just place limits on people. Because I feel like traditionally people have always funny. had conceptions on those with Down syndrome, but I honestly think that they are so capable of many things, such as the one that they gave us an example, Brina, who was able to become a teacher, right? And I think that it's really about encouraging people and not holding them back. Because I feel like if we just continuously hold back people, then they won't be able to reach their full potential. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I totally agree with you. Yeah, nga, parang the last uh, from the last speaker, di ba, She mentioned that we have a moral obligation to raise and empower the citizens. So it is also our job to um give them or like uh, um this this type of like the, the webinar for them to understand and to know better uh, about these types of advocacy and what's Down syndrome. Definitely. And I think that it makes me personally feel closer to uh, the relatives that I have who also have so-called um, different abilities or rather are differently able. Because I feel like now and having this webinar, I get to learn more about what they're experiencing or what they may have possibly gone through. And with that, it makes me more sensitive and makes me rather encouraged to learn how to be better for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I just really think that it's nice, but 
hands and inclusion is doing no yes and not only hands and inclusion of course because there are different organizations that promote these types of all right so i think we're that for the closing remarks so let's give him a warm round of applause to a <laughs> Hello, Sir Island. Are you there? All right, so for our viewers, um, if you want to avail the merchandise earlier. And the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines. To all speakers, to all HNI members, especially my co chairman of this webinar, Mr. Christian Chan, and to Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines. Like what Steph said a while ago, if you guys want to look at your you can just go back to the Hanson Inclusion Facebook page. We, well, rather, they have t shirts, mugs. Steph, what else do they have? Both bags and stickers. So, by just supporting them, yeah. um, you can buy and or donate via GCash or Pay Maya. So, if you want to donate, you can just check their page for more details. And don't forget to also check out their upcoming webinar this March 21. And the details of that will be posted on March 7. Yeah, so don't forget to like the Facebook page of Hands in yes. So thank you so much, Sir Alain, for your closing remarks. So anyway, so I think that's a wrap for this webinar. So to all speakers, makanood man lang ang silaya. Today, sa Hot in Inclusion, may go. To all speakers, All right, due to technical difficulty, it seems that Sir Roiland is not able to share his remarks. But as he wanted to say, he just wanted to say that um, he was thankful for those who really took the time and for those who really wanted to learn. He also thanks the Down Syndrome Association of the Philippines. And with that, we are ready to close our webinar today. Yeah, so again, um, if you have any questions, just feel free to 
um, chat the Hands in Inclusion Facebook page. So stay connected to their social media accounts that may, may flash on the screen later. So thank you very much for watching Connected with Down Syndrome. Again, I am Steph. And I am Lexi saying, may Almighty God bless us. May yung ikaapat na anibersaryo may bagong tapang sa One Inclusion Nation. H&I, God first. Good afternoon, everyone, and I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.